While a majority of Far Cry installments have been pretty fantastic, there's a definite line in the sand to be drawn between the series being a scrappy underdog and being a bona fide household name. The first wave of games starring main character Jack Carver and developed by both Crytek and Ubisoft were overhauled completely when a full sequel, Far Cry 2, introduced a new protagonist, style of play and setting, establishing a new idea of what the franchise quote unquote was. From that point on, the Far Cry series only gained more popularity with every subsequent release, but the radical new direction Ubisoft took the series in makes analysing the games as a whole that bit more difficult. Both versions of them are great, but which one comes out on top? I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and this is every Far Cry game ranked worst to best. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10. Far Cry Vengeance. Arguably the only Far Cry game that could be considered outright bad, Vengeance was a remake of Far Cry Instinct's evolution for the Wii U, and boy was it the worst version of that game. The graphics were the most noticeable casualty in the transfer over to the new console, with the textures in particular taking a ridiculous hit. It looked ugly as sin, but somehow the title's visuals didn't fare quite as bad as its gameplay. Not only did the motion controls work about as well as any of those early Wii games not developed by Nintendo, but the general feel of combat and pretty poor AI would have tanked this game's chances regardless. Number 9. Far Cry Instinct's Evolution A rather rushed follow-up to Far Cry Instinct's Evolution featured the same basic gameplay and story of that first game while introducing an even shorter campaign on top of it. It was all still solid, don't get me wrong, but it was nothing to push the gameplay or the story forward in any considerable way. In fact, Evolution was sort of an expansion that was released as a full title in its own right. Obviously, this led a lot of people worrying that Ubisoft were going to drive this series into the ground by simply relying on small iterative updates and spin-offs rather than a proper, substantial sequel. Not helping matters was that there was actually another release, Far Cry Instinct's Predator, which combined the campaign of Instincts as well as Evolution for next-gen systems. Despite having a next-gen sheen though, this game sort of lost the lush detail that defined those first two releases. Number 8. Far Cry Instincts Because Crytek's original Far Cry was a technical marvel when it first released, Ubisoft had a rather difficult time porting that experience over to consoles. And after creating ports that just outright failed, the publisher opted instead to remake the entire game for the original Xbox. This meant scaling back the scope of the open areas, but it did lead to new weapons, environments and the introduction of feral abilities. That latter feature in particular allowed Instincts to stand out from the crowd, giving players access to an arsenal that was far more robust than any other first person shooter out there. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange addition in a way, but it did give this release an edge over the PC original. However, while Ubisoft did do a pretty good job transferring this experience over to a console, it still paled in comparison to Crytek's original effort. Number 7. Far Cry Primal After the fourth game delivered more of the same old, same old, Far Cry Primal tried to spin off the franchise into a radical new direction, attempting to capture some of the imagination that made the wacky spin-off Blood Dragon such a hit. Primal took players back to 10,000 BC and dropped all forms of conventional weaponry. Instead of relying on automatic weapons, the game's arsenal was instead made up of sticks and stones and spears and bows, which was supported by a ridiculously satisfying melee combat system. Unfortunately, while the setting and the combat did change drastically, the general feel and the structure didn't, which made this game feel like any other Far Cry, but with a cool new paint job. Being able to hunt, recruit and pit the prehistoric wildlife against each other was still great though. It was what made Primal a spin-off worth picking up, even if you had had enough of the series' copy and paste habits. Number 6. Far Cry 4 Following up the surprise smash hit that was Far Cry 3, the fourth game decided to go even bigger than that world-dominating release. The formula was mostly the same, but unfortunately subtle little tweaks like the prevalence of long-range silenced snipers meant that you weren't inspired to experiment or change up your tactics as the game went on. Once you had your tactics down, your guns bought and your abilities upgraded, you didn't need to change them out for the entirety of the duration. 
It didn't help that the plot itself was pretty similar to 3's either, propped up again by a charismatic villain in Troy Baker's Pagan Mint. All this then makes Far Cry 4 a pretty difficult game to criticise. Everything is solid and there's a great time to be had, but despite throwing in huge monsters and even more surreal drug fueled sequences, this sequel lacks the creative spark that made the best games in the franchise so intoxicating. It's still pretty good though. Number 5 Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon not quite a full sequel, but not mere DLC, Far Cry Blood Dragon was a standalone experience that used the third game as a jumping off point to go to some ridiculous, ridiculous places. Dropping the seriousness that occasionally dragged down the third game, this expansion was a loving ode to cheesy 80s sci-fi, smearing everything in a VHS lens, lighting everything up in neon, and even casting Michael Bean as the voice of the main character. Because it wasn't technically a full sequel, the mission variety and the content in general is a little lacking, but as a shorter, more biting experience, Far Cry Blood Dragon more than delivers. Number 4, Far Cry. Though they'd only hang around for one game, the groundwork Crytek laid with this first Far Cry game was phenomenal. An ambitious technical marvel that set the stage for crisis, the beauty of the semi-open world facilitated a sense of immersion that was backed by slower, more demanding gameplay. More linear than the games that would follow it, the original Far Cry still gave players far more freedom than the competition at the time of release. Unfortunately, while there are many open areas, there are just as many claustrophobic hallways full of cannon fodder mutants, which can make the game a little bit of a drag going back to today. It was admittedly bloody difficult too, which kind of makes it a little dated to go back to today, but if you do revisit it, it's pretty clear why Ubisoft wanted to continue with this franchise after Crytek set the foundation so well. Number 3, Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 is a weird game. From a pure mechanical perspective, it's by far the most refined game in the entire series. The guns feel and sound amazing, the action is bombastic, and the general loop of exploring is ace. However, you could never escape the fact that despite the new setting, you're not really doing anything new. The weapons are familiar, the skill trees are virtually identical, and the general gameplay loop has remained unchanged since it was perfected in Far Cry 3. Still, taken on its own merits, Far Cry 5 is incredible. There isn't any one standout feature that leaves your jaw on the floor, but the gameplay is undeniably engaging, the environment so ripe for exploration, and the villain so well portrayed that it's easy to lose yourself for hours on end. Number 2, Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 was the game that skyrocketed the series into mainstream popularity. Keeping the same basic outline as the second game, casting players as an underdog, stranded in a strange land and attempting to take down a violent tyrant, this sequel did away with some of the more divisive elements of that release and replaced them with pure, unadulterated fun. In the process, Far Cry 3 established an open world formula that pretty much every single game in the world ripped off immediately. The gameplay loop of scoping out an outpost, sneaking in or blowing it away and then using your experience points to become an even more efficient killer has been used thousands and thousands of times now, but it never fit any other game quite like it did Far Cry 3. There isn't one wasted opportunity in Far Cry 3 and that inherent sense of polish made for a title that still feels great to go back to today. Count me in when it's remastered. Number 1 Far Cry 2 it was tough deciding whether or not Far Cry 3 or Far Cry 2 deserve the top spot of this list. They're both quality titles and the former is arguably a more polished and robust experience overall. That said, the latter's ambition and the highs it reaches when it's firing on all cylinders allows the game to reach a level of narrative and gameplay cohesion that none of the other entries in the series have quite ever matched. A lot of the key features were admittedly divisive at launch, from the sloppy aiming to the way enemies respawned and of course the fact that your character had malaria, but all of these different elements came together to form a cohesive survival at all costs gameplay style that far exceeds the intensity of any other entry in the series. Likewise, a lot of the features that made Far Cry 3 so good were actually fleshed out here first. Far Cry 2 is admittedly a less refined game than those that would follow it, but the ambition and heart here far exceeds anything in those other games. 
But that's just my dumb ranking of the Far Cry series, and most importantly, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments. Is Far Cry 2 the best one, or am I talking out my ass? Either way, I've been Josh, you've been watching What Culture, and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> oh, wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below. And also, the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head? As there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.